Hi guys, I have a question for you. Are you friendly to your friendly bacteria? Um, well, this is a good question. Let's talk about it. Uh, first of all, there's two main uh, purposes for friendly bacteria. Another name for friendly bacteria is called flora. All right. To number one, make vitamins. Okay, and also they make up your immune system. Um, there's only really two vitamins um, that your body can make without the help of microbes, and that would be vitamin D from the skin and vitamin B3 that can be converted from tryptophan, which is a protein. Vitamin D helps build the bone, helps the immune system, it does a lot of other things, but those are the two things that it primarily does. B3 is really good for um, decreasing LDL cholesterol and increasing the HDL, the good cholesterol, right? Which we know it's not good or bad, but the point is that it helps regulate cholesterol. It also helps your skin, it helps a lot of things. But the body can't make other vitamins, so either you're going to get it from the diet or you're going to get it from your microbes, okay? And this is why you have to start becoming more friendly to your friendly bacteria because you have to look at them as partners or um, things that actually help you. Um, they are the energy factories. They're your insurance policy. They're the backup vitamins that you need. Um, now, they live off of fiber, so when you consume vegetables, we don't want to do. We don't want to feed them grain fi fiber. We want to feed them vegetable fiber, fermented vegetables, sauerkraut, kimchi. All the fermented vegetables are very, very good. Asparagus, you know, garlic. They're all really, really good fibers to feed your uh, friendly microbes. But let's just take a look at um, friendly bacteria can make uh, vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 <laughs> prevents the calcification of your arteries. They get rid of soft tissue calcium deposits in the body. So they're good for kidney stones, calcium that deposits in the breast tissue. So they take the calcium and put it into the bone where it should be. So this is one very, very important vitamin. So the body also makes something called folate, which you normally think of uh, preventing birth defects in a pregnant woman when they take prenatals, but it's also needed to make neurotransmitters to prevent things like depression, mood disorders, and to reduce stress. Also, they are responsible for making certain type of protein as well. Now, biotin is also um, important too and is made by the friendly bacteria. Biotin is really good for your hair. It's good for cell growth. And if you're deficient in biotin, you could lose your hair. And so a lot of people are taking this supplement, but it could be a digestive problem. You just don't have the friendly microbes to make biotin in the first place. Now, there's really only one microbe uh, that makes biotin. There's not a lot of microbes, so it's really easy to become deficient. But B12, you have many different microbes that can make B12. So this is um, more difficult to become deficient, but if you're a vegetarian, you could be deficient because normally this is from animal products. However, I just had my wheatgrass juice powder tested, and I found that it's double the RDAs. And it's interesting because in wheatgrass, you don't have B12. So it's made by the friendly bacteria that lives with the wheatgrass. When you consume vegetables, you are consuming something that is just loaded with friendly microbes, just so you know. So yes, you need to clean them off, but you don't necessarily want to destroy those microbes. That's probably half the benefit in addition to all the uh, vitamins and minerals and the phytonutrients. So B12 is good for red blood cell, preventing anemia, nerve, brain, energy, and many, many other different functions. Your microbes make B1 which also is a precursor for all the neurotransmitters in the body, like GABA, for example. And that's why when you're stressed and you take B1, you just feel so relaxed, because B1 makes GABA, and GABA is an anti-stress vitamin. Now, when you take antibiotics, um, you're going to find that you're not going to absorb nutrients very well after that. So you have to put that friendly flora back into the gut by consuming fermented vegetables, like sauerkraut. That's very important. But any, if someone has taken many antibiotics, they have a lot of nutritional deficiencies, and uh, they need to take a lot of supplements because they, your body's not making enough vitamins. So you have to realize, number one, that your, your body is bathed in a sea of microbes. You have 10 times as many microbes as you do your own cells. So you want to become more friendly to them. You don't want to just kill them off with too many antibiotics. So look at them as your partners, as your insurance policy, and take care of them. Thanks for watching.